That's BYU. There's a lot of Mormons there, I tell ya. The state of Utah has by far the highest percentage of Mormons in the world. They think two in three residents in this state are Mormon. But here in the Salt Lake City burb of Provo, that number is closer to 90%. That's a lot. That's almost everyone. So you could say this is one of the least diverse places in the United States. Close to a million of this area's 1.2 million people are white, upper middle class Mormons. But I didn't really know a lot about Mormons. They don't really teach you about this culture. I grew up with Mormons in my neighborhood, and all I really knew is they had a really big family and they couldn't play with me on Sundays. So, since I was in Utah and all, I thought, you know what? I think I should learn a lot more about our Mormon brothers and sisters and sister wives. So I spent a day driving around in Mormon land to show you what it looks like. Some parts seemed pretty Mormony, and some didn't. But there's something going on here behind closed doors. The Mormon Empire is showing some cracks, and the LDS Church is worried. All of us can meet God's high expectations, however great or small our capacity and talent may be. Let us pray for his love-inspired correction. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Look at those mountains. What a view, people. Back in 1847, the first Mormons arrived in Salt Lake City, and they had a pretty nice view of those mountains. Back then, this was all part of Mexico, but it was far enough away from religious persecution that they felt safe. Eventually, many more Mormons came on trains, and they set up new homes and started farming. And today, all of this is their domain. There's six and a half million Mormons in the U.S., and almost half are in Utah. A big chunk of them are right here in the Utah Valley, along the Wasatch Front, right where I am right now. The Mormon influence here is strong. It guides the conservative politics and, really, the way of life here. It's almost impossible to get elected here if you're not LDS. In fact, the state senator, he was run unopposed by somebody from the Democratic Party last time out. The libs all put their money behind the less conservative guy. Who lost? So if you move into a neighborhood in this part of Utah, there's a good chance you'll be asked, are you Mormon? And then when you say no, they'll still smile and wave and they'll be nice to you. You'll be added to a list and then bugged to join the church from time to time. They're great people and make for great neighbors for the most part, but they won't treat you the same. You can't be your complete selves around them. That's just the way it is. They'll tell you the same thing. I'll tell you what, my first impression of these Mormon strongholds is it's all very clean and neat. That's the Mormon way. It's very buttoned up and conservative. And there are LDS churches everywhere here. They're like barber shops in Baltimore. Look at this map. And this isn't even all the way accurate. I mean, I drove around Mormon land for an entire afternoon, and I saw way more LDS churches than are depicted on this map. Here's an example. I'm in front of one LDS church, and then I'm going to fast forward and show you as I drive over to the other one that's like a block away. It's like this all over. 
I was driving around in Orem late in the afternoon, and I came across some Mormon churches right across the street from one another. Like, right across the street. And it's like that everywhere here. There's two or three on one street everywhere you go. You can't get away from it. Earlier in the day, I was in Provo, and I came upon a Mormon church right next to a trailer park. I thought that was mildly interesting. And then I drove through the trailer park to see what was going on inside. And there's the temple sticking out above the neighborhood. And then I got to the end of the trailer park, and there was another Mormon church on the other side of the trailer park. Too much, Utah. Too much. Now, usually when I see a church, I pull in and I get out and I usually knock on the door. There's usually a car or two. I go up and I chat with people inside. But, uh-uh, not here. Every single one of these churches was doors locked till Sunday. I thought maybe they'd be inside making jello or counting money or something. Nope, they were all empty. Let's see if anybody's in here. Church is closed. We'll try another one. See if anybody's in here. Come on. Hmm. Downtown Salt Lake City was a different story, though. That's the main Mormon temple for the Mormons. Like, their HQ. It's under construction right now, so I'll have to show you from an old drone shot what the LDS HQ looks like when it's not under construction. This is what it used to look like. But I'm sure it'll be much fancier once they're done with this five-year remodel. Us regular folks will never know what it looks like in there, since we're not allowed inside. Anyways, next door to the HQ is another temple that is open to the public. And a lot of people were touring the building, so I went inside as well. So I was standing there observing the Mormon temple, and then a woman came over who was a member of the church, and she struck up a conversation. I tried to get her to go on camera. She didn't want to be filmed. Almost like you're on the airplane. Uh, can I ask you a qu sure. question? Absolutely. Like, on, like, can I videotape you? Mm -hmm. I can't. I was just going to ask like, how the church has changed or whatever. Yeah, none of the sisters can be videotaped. Oh, really? Who can I, can I talk to them? You, you can talk to them. You just can't video okay. anybody. Okay. So we just talked about what I had heard about the church, and she challenged my assumptions, which is fair and then she tried to get me to join i think right there in front of all the other tourists you know our first charge and our first responsibility is the first commandment that heavenly father gave to us mm -hmm. you're to love your father in heaven with all your heart mind, mind and soul So, what's the latest tea with the Mormon religion here? Like the 411 on what's going on? I'll tell you. First off, the Mormons are a very healthy population. You're not allowed to drink or smoke or do a lot of the other stuff that harms your body. You gotta treat your body like a temple. They do not tolerate gays, tattoos, pink hair, Bud Light influencers, or people who use drugs or listen to loud music. Uh-uh. It all seems very stiff and uniform, but there's some interesting stuff going on here. There's millions of people that are part of the Mormon church, 
but those numbers might be misleading. In case you haven't heard, the Mormon ranks are dwindling, and boy are they concerned about it. First of all, just because you're part of the church doesn't mean you actually go. There's a growing number of Jack Mormons, people who are in the books but don't really hang out as much anymore. I think I heard less than half of those listed as Mormon or even active anymore. But their bigger problem are all the FMers or former Mormons. Seems that young millennials and Gen Z kids don't like to be told they can't do the things their friends are doing on the internet. <laughs> Who'd have thunk? Plus, you have all these new people coming in. They don't want anything to do with Mormon. They just want to get the hell out of San Diego because there's poop everywhere. For the first time ever, Salt Lake City is more non-Mormon than Mormon. First time ever. Just happened. So you have all these new things going on, all the non-religious people moving here and the Mormons dropping out, and it's really messing with the status quo here. The politics aren't the same, I can tell you that. It's still conservative, but less so. Check this out. Of the top 10 cities losing population, three of them are right here in Mormon land. Three. That's a lot of Mormon momentum loss. Huh? The neighborhoods are changing. Used to be back in the day, maybe 5% of your neighborhood was non-Mormon. In some of the newer communities, a quarter of the neighborhood is non-LDS. All these new West Coasters, they don't care about the Book of Mormon. They don't know why Pioneer Day is a state holiday. They don't care about why the heck the state flag has a beehive on it. It's actually because Mormons take pride in being industrious and they're hardworking and tight-knit, like bees. But they don't know that. And all those LDS churches I showed you, many are now closing or being merged together. That was something they thought they'd never see happen. And the Mormons are worried. They won't talk about it in public, but they see the signs. So they're cranking out more babies. They're preaching in low-income countries. Anything to get the numbers up. And guess what else they're doing? They're a lot less strict now. Used to be, there was no way you could skip out on church or leave early on Sunday. Now, stores and roads are busier on Sundays. Now the church lets their folks smoke pot, and they allow tattoos. You can even be gay, but you can't get married. No way on that one. As the LDS church has learned, you gotta let some of that stuff go, or you ain't gonna have anyone in them pews anymore. I saw a lot of gay flags in town. I was surprised by that. You might even see some Biden signs in yards here. I didn't see that, but I saw a lot of Trump stuff. And check this out. This was really confusing. The post office in Provo is all rainbowed out. Like, I'm guessing in support of the gay community here. <laughs> this is the last place I thought I'd see that. And is that even legal? The government office getting all political? I don't know, maybe it is. I'd imagine it's really hard for the Mormon church to back down from their beliefs. To say, okay, maybe we were wrong about all this. Because forever now, it's been very top-down. Kind of hard to make concessions when you've been saying that you've been right all along. Might have to throw out everything they've been preaching when they admit that they weren't right about some things. Going back to that sister that I talked about at the Mormon church downtown, 
She basically denied all this change is in the air stuff. But I heard the church is like letting some of that up. Like they're, <clears throat> some of the rules, they're sort of loosening them because of the membership decline. And they're like, okay, you know, we're not going to enforce. going to love us less and say, oh, it's okay if you drink a little tea. I'm okay with that. No. Okay. If you're not solidified in something, you're wishy-washy. I don't know how a person goes through life being wishy-washy. So what happens when you leave the Mormon church anyways? Well, you go get drunk. That's what you do. No, I talked to a couple of people who cut ties with the LDS church and they said it was pretty tough at first. I mean, just about everybody in your life is still following all the rules. So it's kind of hard to find the time to hang out with your old friends. And then you have to retrain your brain on what's okay. If you take the M out of Mormons, you have morons. Nappy? Take the M out of you and you get appy. Like, appy to kick your butt for saying that. What gives? I didn't mean it. The Mormon church says treat others with kindness and love and respect. Huh. Well, maybe they're less like us than I thought. Maybe we can learn something from the Mormon folks. Here's one of the nicest parts of Mormon land. This is in Orem. Homes here are about five to six hundred thousand dollars, but they've gone down about 10% lately. That's because Utah's housing market was way overpriced. This home in Orem is for sale for $25 million. Yeah, I know, a $25 million home in Mormon land. What do these people do, I tell ya? This is what you might consider the worst parts of LDSville. Homes here are still pushing 350 k though. People say this is their bad side of town. But come on now, I know bad. This is not that. Most of it all looks the same though. And by the way, I didn't see an entire cop the entire afternoon I drove around here. Interesting. If you didn't know it, Mormons have a very restrictive diet. They can't take drugs or drink coffee. Booze is a no-no, so they drink Martinelli's at functions. That's not the same. We all know that. But one sin the Mormons allow themselves is sugar. And sugar they inhale. There are sugary places all over this land. I saw chocolate places and smoothie places and sugar, sugar, sugar. Crumble cookies is a staple here. You see those all over. That's a place with like $5 cookies that no one person over the age of 18 should eat. But they do, because they can. They're sugar monsters. I went into this one, which was right next to a cream puffs place, which is another sugar dive. Another sugar fix you see all over here, are these soda shops. There are many, many, many soda licious's in this part of Utah. If you don't know what these are, it's where you go and you get a soda and then you add a lot of crappy sugar stuff to it. Totally bad for you. And then they add in a side of cookies for the win. This so delicious was closed. This one was not. Long line for soda, I have to say. Mormons also love Jell-O, but I tried and tried to find a restaurant in town that served Jell-O when I was here for four days, and I could not do that. Very disappointing. Driving around, I think I saw as many dental offices as I saw sugar outlets. Seems like dentist in Utah would be a career with job security, huh? I turned a corner one time and I was driving down the road and I noticed that there was a missionary mall. I was like, 
What's the Missionary Mall? There's two stores in here of note. One's called Sister Missionary Mall, and the other one's called Modern Missionary Menswear. Of course, I had to go into both. Inside of Modern Missionary Menswear, they have all the suits and ties you need to look your best when you go on a mission. Super hip Mormon digs, I have to say. And the whole place smells like Axe body spray for some reason. How you look is the first message you deliver. Makes sense. Inside of Sister Missionary Mall, it's all women's modern Mormon stuff. Nice blouses and dresses all over the place. Very nice looking stuff, huh? Some of the clothes here even have name tags on them, so you can see how your dress or blouse will look when you're official. I'd never wear this crap. <laughs> Do you even know anything about the Mormon population? I know that women are subservient and men can have a bunch of wives. That's stupid. Well, people think you're Mormon because you have so many kids, Karen. Of course, I had to go into their Walmart. I wanted to see how a Mormon Walmart would compare to regular Walmarts. You can always get a feel for a community when you go into their Walmart. This shirt seems relevant. Gay pride stuff in a Mormon land Walmart? What the what the? Of course, this Walmart has nicely pressed white dress shirts. You can never have too many of those. And I found the Jello. Finally, look at that stash. I was actually surprised there's so much left on the shelves since it's Saturday afternoon and all. I found the jello. Oh my God. Look at all that jello. I mean, it goes all the way up to the roof. There were a few other things I found interesting to show you. Some of them show you just how much the area is relaxed a bit. One restaurant serves a Joseph Smith Boner Burger. <laughs> that seems a little off-putting. And the Salt Lake City Airport serves polygamy beer and five wives vodka, if you can believe it. Good lord, am I confused. Utah's lost some of its uniqueness. It used to be kind of quirky here, and it seems like it's getting a little bit more mainstream. But despite the change of demographic and the political shift going on here, a lot of the heavy Mormon communities have remained very clean and neat and safe and nice. It's a lot more peaceful and pleasant here than most of the places I've been to. I'll tell you that. But there's a battle going on in plain sight here. I think the Mormons are okay with all the new people coming in and not wanting to be part of the church. But they're like, can you at least respect our traditions and history and not wreck the place? Because we cannot move all over again. The Mormons are going to have to stake a claim somewhere. Do they freak out about the church's closing or focus on the elections? Tough call. And yeah, there's less and less people paying their 10% to the Mormon church now. But they'll be okay. They have $100 billion in the bank or whatever it is. I wanted to ask you about the, the Mormon church. I, you, you had said that you joined and, and that you've learned a lot about different things about the Mormon church. Um, and then you had said that it's kind of changed a little bit. It's becoming a little bit more accepting of other people and, and other viewpoints. I was curious to hear your perspective on that. Yeah, I, I just felt that, I mean, within the, within the community of the, uh, membership, it, and as far as I'm concerned, from the get-go, I feel like the church is inclusive. It's just the people within that are members of the church maybe weren't as inclusive. Like many of them weren't as inclusive as the, you know, you're taught the ideal, right? 
But then you have to learn to live that ideal within the framework of your own uh, prejudices, your own experiences, your own uh, likes, dislikes, how you, you know, just because you join the church doesn't mean that you suddenly become Jesus, you know, like Jesus, just because, you know, like you have to learn. That's what we're here for, right? We're all learning. But the leadership say, just because we say, you know, it's the restored gospel doesn't mean that the restoration is over. Like it's a line upon line, precept upon precept, learning and growing and changing. And and uh, it's a living, growing church, right? It doesn't just stay. This is how we are, you know, back from the 1800s or whatever. And this is how it is now. We got to stay that way. No, it's a constant change and growth and struggle and moving forward. And Okay. Uh, I, I hear that the Mormon church is losing members. Is that true? I haven't. Well, you know, I haven't really heard uh, numbers. Um, there are youth. I mean, I have a couple kids that, I mean, they were baptized in the church. They're no longer. I mean, my daughter, uh, my youngest daughter doesn't even, you know, like believe in God or whatever anymore. Um the whole, I guess what you'd call, I don't know, people are calling it woke or whatever. Why you hear woke? I don't know. Uh, but there's certain systems in society and certain, um, and I love the idea. I mean, I, I really love the idea of, of people not being judged by their gender. I mean, because I was as a youth, you know, I had two older brothers and I was like this little sister and I was treated differently and all that. And I didn't like that. I wanted to, and I wanted to wear what my brothers wore. <laughs> like I wanted their shoes, you know, I wanted, I wanted their coats. I liked what they wore. And, and so I love the idea that everybody's like, can be an individual and do what they want, you know, and be who they are as an individual. I love that. And I, I mean, the church has just read a, um, has read a statement. I mean, if you have marijuana, if you have a medical marijuana card, right. You you smoke marijuana for whatever medical condition you have. You can still go to the temple. Mm -hmm. if, if you have a medical marijuana card, it's legal. We follow the dictates. We follow the the laws, yeah. right? So you can go to the temple if you smoke if you smoke weed when you have your medical marijuana card because you're following your rule your law and that's your medicine. And and we are taught in the church to like it's the one. The one that matters it's an individual each individual is what who, ma who matters um and we have you know i've been in wards where there's transgender people um gay there's gay gay people lesbian people in our wards who attend church and uh and they're members of the church and they love the church they want to be accepted for who they are and so that's is that frowned upon excuse me is that frowned upon in the mormon church gay uh alternative sexuality is that uh, do they uh, does the church approve of that do they frown upon that well yeah i mean you can uh, i could be gay i could be gay i could be lesbian or whatever trans whatever i am i can still go to the temple is that I'm new is that new yeah. though like have they relaxed those rules the commandments it's it goes for everybody like if i'm i'm if i'm heterosexual I'm not having, I'm not having sexual relations with someone I'm not married to. If, but in the gay community, yeah, you have to live, you have to live uh, the standards of the church. BYU had it where they said, okay, so we're not going to judge anybody. You know, if you're if you're gay and you're out on a date, you're still you still have to follow this. You know, I mean, you have to follow the standards of the church. You could be holding hands, you could be kissing or whatever you're not going to get expelled from school for that, but you would be expelled from having sexual relations with that person, just like any other person would be expelled from school for having sexual relations with someone they're not married to. But the marriage thing, that's where we, that's where the, uh, the roads diverge because the church does not recognize gay marriage. So therefore you, if you're, uh, they had a conflict where, so there were gay members of the church who wanted their children baptized. And at first, the leadership was saying, you know, they were trying to navigate through this new thing. And they said, we won't baptize children of gay 
families because we don't want to be teaching them something that is against maybe what they're being taught in their home. And so they didn't want to usurp the authority of the parent. The parent should be the ultimate authority of how that child is brought up. But then they changed it. They said, as long as the parents agree that the child will be taught according to the standards of the church, and they're okay with that, then yes, the children can be on record and we can baptize the children into, as members of the church. So they don't ever want to usurp the authority of the parent, which I think is good. Um, so, but, but to get back to your question, yeah, so in that regard, yeah, there are people, there's always been people coming and going out of the church, you know, um, yeah. I don't know if the numbers have lessened, but maybe the growth has slowed. Um, yeah, I can imagine young kids these days don't like to be told what to do. Um, that's just how young kids are. But especially when they, you know, they, they see the rest of the world on their phones and they're going, I want to be like that. And if the church says I can't be like that, then I'm not going to be part of the church. So the strength of youth. We have a little pamphlet called Strength of Youth that's been redone. Even about tattoos, it says pray about it. You know, it used to say, don't do tattoos, don't do more than one ear piercing, don't do, you know, wear certain clothes, wear, do this, do that. Um, and now it doesn't say that. In the new ones, it says, pray about what you want for your life, you know, like pray about getting your tattoo, you know, think, pray to your Heavenly Father and figure it out for yourself. Pray and think about what, how you want to be presented in the world. Consider how you want to show yourself in the world as far as your clothing, as far as your attire, as far as your earrings, or whatever you do with your body. And so um, in that regard, yeah, so our bishop, one of our bishops joked, he goes, so if I have a tattoo next week, you'll know that I prayed about it and I really, I really wanted this tattoo. So it's not like this, uh, there used to be, you know, like that's how the church is changing. It's like putting the responsibility on the individual to figure it out for themselves, what they feel is appropriate for their body and for themselves. So that, you know, all that's good. I think it's good. Some good streamlining and some good rest restoring of certain things, you know? Yeah. I like the idea of a church modernizing its views based on the real world situation that we're in. I, you know, it's easy to, stick to your beliefs and, and not ever change, but you can see what happens when you do that. You got to go with the flow or you're going to lose your church membership and support. So I, I respect the fact that the Mormon church is, is, you know, seeing the, seeing the changes in the world and trying to adapt. That, that makes uh, a lot of sense. Yeah, and, to me. and we're not the same. We're not the same people. The leadership of the 1800s, you know, they're, they're long gone. This is new leadership. Everybody's new all the time, new people coming in, even most of the people are most like a quorum of the 12 apostles. I mean, I don't think there's anybody under 80 there. I mean, there might be like, I don't know, there might be in their 70s, late 70s. There might be some seven year olds. But I mean, President Nelson is 97 years old, still traveling the world. He's a retired heart surgeon and he's pretty like he's pretty cool. I mean, he's a beautiful person. You know, he's a good he's a good guy. Um and uh, so, yeah, I mean, we're not the church is the church is the members, right? The church is the members. Yeah. Um, Let me ask you really quick and, and try to bear with me here in, in, in 10 or 20 seconds. Can you summarize the difference between the Mormon church and other denominations? What beliefs? or what makes you kind of stand out or separate you from most of the other um, religions? If you could just quick, like summarize it in, in like the fastest well, way. Is you know, there The Catholic church and the Mormon, well, I call the church of Jesus Christ, Latter-day Saints are the only two churches who claim to have the authority of the priesthood power directly from Jesus Christ. That's the main difference. We have, we claim to have the authority um, and the Catholic Church claims to have the authority through Peter. We believe that that was lost and it had to be restored. So Christ actually restored his church through young Joseph Smith by having angelic beings come and restore that priesthood power. That's the main thing. 
the 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 people who were reformers left the Catholic Church and tried to reform the church. They were doing great. They did a great work. But you can't make it happen. It had to be on God t- God's time, or whatever. So we believe that 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 authority has been restored to the earth, and so this is actual literal uh, restoration of the Church of Jesus Christ on the earth. Yeah. Why, why is the Mormon church so misunderstood? It, it, it doesn't really, if you're not in the church, you're, I mean, there's no gray line. You're either LDS or you're not. Um, the church is misunderstood, I think, and not or not understood at all. Nobody really takes the time to really get to know the LDS side of things. Why do you think that is? Why, why does the church kind of like the Mormon church over here and then you've got the rest of the denominations over here uh i think it's fear by because we have the book of mormon that's what people are afraid of the book of mormon is what people are afraid of and what it entails why why are people afraid of the book of mormon what does it entail that people are afraid of it uh it because they live in fear and they're very cautious about expanding upon this uh from the quote from the Bible, which I love the Bible, it's scripture, uh, and that says if you add to this book, which they're taking it as a whole, the whole Bible, if you add to this book, the curses will be added to you and all that kind of thing. And uh, so they go, no, you know, I can't read that. That's adding, that's adding to the Bible. And, and that is like God just said no. You know. No, I get you. When, when you told me on the phone that when you joined the Mormon church, your family thought you were crazy. Is that true? Yeah. yeah. They, it was back in the days, it was in the eighties and there was a lot of like cults coming up, right? Like this guy saying, come follow me. I'm so-and-so I'm a prophet or whatever. And then you drink this Kool-Aid or whatever. Right. Um, and you die, everybody dies or whatever, or, or this lady that channels, 5,000 year old spirits and she has this farm, you know, somewhere and people pay thousands and thousands of dollars to go to this place. And, and they, and they hear this ancient wisdom from this woman that she did. And she, I, what I saw it on, on a channel once where it all of a sudden her voice changes and it's speaking, you know, they thought I was getting involved in something weird because I didn't even believe in God. Like as a teenager, I, I went from Catholic to, atheist right i just was i kind of went you know like down the path of you know drugs and alcohol for a time as a youth as a teenager and uh people were like what is going on with sharon like she doesn't even believe in god all of a sudden she's like joining a church like this church and um and my family was like you're catholic right you're like we've been catholic for hundreds of years you can't like what are you doing like you're like and, and I quit drinking, I quit smoking, I quit, right? And that was the, the therefore I was a rejecting my ancestors because everybody drank and smoked, right? Um, how has the church changed at all? I, I hear that they're lessening some of the strict rules. They're trying to get more people to kind of stay involved and, 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 by you know bending some of the rules that have been always straight is that is that true or have you guys noticed that at all i feel like in some ways like they um i know so we're not like extremely active right now but i know that they lessen church time so it used to be three hours now it's two hours um which a lot of people were super happy about because it takes up less of your time on Sunday. And I know with certain things like so for instance you used to not be able to get like tattoos or piercings that was a big no no and now it's more of a it's the spirit of the law you pray about it you figure it out instead of them telling you you can't have it it's more of like your personal relationship with with god is what they try to push it more instead of yeah because i feel like before it used to be pretty but it still kind of has a negative stigma yeah i would say it's not changed because the culture still hasn't shifted that way i'd say the younger generation is like oh yeah like i can get a tattoo and i can get piercings but the older generation no i would say yeah it would still be pretty against it you know it's just Mm -hmm. part cultural part church standards i guess just how people perceive it i don't know if that's helpful but and then 
I'm trying to think of other rules that they've changed. I don't I know um, you can smoke pot now as long as it's a medical. Yeah, yeah medical, medical, marijuana. Yeah, medical marijuana is okay. Mm-hmm. And that was before like weed was like bad, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And I'd still say a lot of people have that view still, mm-hmm. but it's getting better. Again, a lot with the younger generation more is okay with it than the older generation. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Is that because people are going to not go if they can't have pink hair or a tattoo or like smoke pot every now and then? Are they doing that to, to basically keep the younger folks interested? Um. I think it's trying to change the culture from being so maybe, I don't know, judgmental. I don't know. Uh, I feel like we what were kind of, we were kind of like pretty conservative as a church for a while, like very mm-hmm. by the book. This is how it is. This is how it's always been. I feel like now they're trying to preach more of like a Christ-like love, like Christ would love somebody with pink hair. Christ would love somebody with tattoos come as you are and be a better person through Christ is kind of what they're trying to do more of. And make your decisions more of a personal. Yeah. Which, which has always been the teachings. It just hasn't been more of like the culture Mm -hmm. with the older generation. So they're trying to shift that. And I am assuming they're trying to keep younger people involved because I mean, that is becoming more normal. Like, you know, having tattoos and piercings is a lot more normal than it used to be, you know, um, because I feel like, yeah, the church was kind of in the 1950s, you know, standards, I guess. So I don't know. It's kind of a little bit of both, I would say. Yeah. And that's the perspective that most people like me that don't attend that church think it's very strict and conservative and by the book and, and, and stiff. And so the fact that it's relaxing, I think, um, is a sign that um, they realize that, you know, we got to kind of change some of the things that we're doing because um you know if we don't we got we we have to change or we or we suffer from a lack of interest and a lack of um folks that just aren't gonna want to participate on sundays if Mm -hmm. they can't be themselves yeah 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 yep you should just come as you are and i feel like that's mainly a utah thing so people who are mormon outside of utah i feel like are much more Relaxed. Relaxed about it. it. It's specifically in Utah. Yeah. This is where it gets really bad like that. But Why Utah? Why is Utah so hardcore conservative about that stuff? I guess it's where the headquarters is. Yeah. yeah. And just like the majority of the culture is LDS in certain areas. I mean, there's some areas where it's not. But I would say because of that, it's almost like people try to outperfect each other a little bit. And so it becomes this... Uh, almost just this culture of, oh, well, you know, they say, you know, you get blessed for being obedient. So I'm going to not watch TV on Sundays and I'm not going to like, they almost take it a level higher, you know? And I think the church is trying to relax that and say, no, it's okay. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So yeah, by, by progressive, you said BYU students are like more progressive in the church. What, what ways, in what ways are, are the youth, of the LDS church being progressive more with like LGBTQ stuff and um, just more the way they vote. I would say mainly, I would say the biggest issue is the LGBTQ um, plus community. I would say, cause there is a lot of people in the, like, so the church has a really strong stance against um, being and you can be gay and be in the church, but you can't practice. It's kind of, you know, you can't, actively be gay um that's probably the a bad way to put it but yeah um so i, I, I feel, feel like if you people... have deeper questions on that you're probably gonna have to talk to somebody who's a little bit more knowledgeable than we are yeah <laughs> so. but like i feel like more people are starting to be try to change the church in that way to make it more friendly towards lgbt more inclusive. Yeah. yeah, more inclusive, yeah. Okay. Yeah, cuz you, you from what I gather you gay isn't necessarily a, a such a stigma and but you can't get married still. Yeah. Like you can yeah. be gay, but you can't like you can't there's it, it, it's like it's, it's, it's not kind of like, like weird, mm-hmm. It's kind of like a weird line yeah. that they're drawing. Yeah. And I don't know. Yeah. yeah. And I okay. mean yeah, 
So I feel like there's a lot of students that are like college age or people just more are, open to it. Yeah. And more mm-hmm. accepting. Of yeah. It. I would say. Yeah, yeah. than it used to be. They, yeah. Like, they still want you, like, yeah, what, basically what it boils down to is we believe in Christ. We believe that Christ would love somebody who is gay. So why should we not treat them the same? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And let, me, let me ask you one more question about the future. Where do you think the future of the church is going? Where's the LDS church going? Do you, do you see if you, do you see any trends that are um, things that are you guys are talking about, or or how do you imagine the church will be in ten to twenty years? Um, I actually think they'll probably shorten it again to like an hour because I know they're trying to practice more of a home based church where you're just teaching the principles in your home instead of having this long time at church. And I'm not sure how they'll get with the rules. Um, I don't know. It's hard to say because there's a lot of like people that are very staunch and a lot of people that want to see things change. So it's, it really depends, I guess, on church leadership. I really can't even foresee what would happen. And we believe that, you know, God is giving them revelations for modern times. So it's kind of, I don't know. It's kind of up to them. Just as the average member like us, it's just try to live our best lives. Try to be as kind as possible. That's about it. Mm -hmm. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. And I can also help you find your new house too. Email me and I'll work with you on not just helping you figure out where to move, but I can help you find your perfect home too. That's right. I know awesome, reliable agents all over the country, and I'd love to connect you to somebody who can help you search for that perfect home. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great. You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.